Sierra is there, she's still. We are now in a stall. We are about to stall. Hit that subscribe button and join us on our adventures in and around South Africa. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we'll be talking about installing vortex generators on a kit fox for maximum effect without changing the stall characteristics. We'll show you how we got there and which vortex generators we think is the best. We gave this installation a very fitting name, about to stall. Because you don't want to stall, you want to be about to stall. A few things I have to emphasize before we continue. A slower stall speed is never worth it if you change the stall from a gentle to a deadly stall. You need to keep the stall characteristics the same. Secondly, the installation I'm about to show you is for the Kitfox Super Sport 7 only. Seriously guys, we made a video called Vortex Generators Can Kill You, where we talk about our experience during the development of the about to stall configuration. So how did we determine this perfect placement? Apart from stalling the aircraft about 300 times, we bought almost every shape and size of Vortex Generator we can find. We then followed the instructions as per the manufacturer, which range anything from 5 to 10% from the leading edge, with between 60 and 90 millimeters between them. We did about 10 different installations when it happened. Incipient spin. It was bad. It was really, really bad. I kicked the opposite rudder. She just kept on going. I had no rudder control. After about 3 seconds, which felt like forever, I just kept the opposite rudder, gained control and pulled her out of the dive. We messed up guys, we messed up bad. We changed the stall characteristics so much that we almost lost control. We also realized that you can't just install vortex generators on the wing without tending to the elevator and rudder, which frankly weren't designed to fly this slowly. Scared to death and desperate to fix this, we set out a systematic plan on how to find the perfect placement. We did as much research as possible and spoke to people like John McBean from Kitfox, Jerry from Pacific Northwest, and John Herbert, my aviation voice of reason here in South Africa. We then installed tufts on the wing. This gave us a visual indication of what's going on during the stall, with and without vortex generators. To start, we needed a base, so we removed all the vortex generators, and now I set off to do my first stall after the incipient spin. As I get close to the stall, I feel a clear buffet. And you all know the Kid Fox is not one to buffet. So what was this? It was me shaking. I was still so rattled from the previous experience that I had to go do some proper steep turns to get rid of that sickening feeling. After that, continue to do the clean test and this is what we found. Without vortex generators, the Kid Fox has a very gentle systematic stall. There is three areas to consider. The roof, the fuel tank section and the rest of the wing. And I can already hear you guys saying, ah, why is he talking about the roof? Well, we packed a line of tufts all the way from the roof to the elevator. And we saw as the air detaches from the roof, we lose elevator authority. So we want to keep the air attached as long as possible. The stall starts at the back of the fuel tank section. It moves up the wing until it reaches 50%. The rest of the wing then starts to stall. Once that has reached 50%, the air has detached completely from the fuel tank section and you are now in a stall. There is still some air attached to the rest of the wing and you're left with some level of control. We broke this project into five sections. The outer wing, the fuel tank section, the roof, the elevator and rudder. If you look at the outer wing, you will see it is almost corrugated. The ribs is slightly higher than the space between them. So the path through the ribs is shorter than the path over the ribs. So in theory, there should be two different air speeds. A vortex generator placed between the ribs will act different to one placed in front or on top of a rib. But this is what you'll end up doing when using fixed spacings as recommended by most suppliers. We found that placing a counter-rotating pair, which is two vortex generators in opposite direction that works together to create stronger vortices in the center between the ribs to work the best. It should be about 35 millimeters from your leading edge, but more importantly, five millimeters behind the hard section of your leading edge. We found this to work so well that in the 300 plus stalls we did, we never saw any signs of air detaching from the outside room, even when we did power on stalls at 24 knots. Now that we have a super performing outside room, we set our sights on the fuel tank section. We didn't care about airspeed at this stage. All we wanted to do is to upgrade the fuel tank section proportional to the outside room. 
Believe me, this is easier said than done. This small piece of wing is littered with challenges. The main one being the fuel gap. We taped it up to try and make it more streamlined, but till the end, this is the Achilles of the installation. I don't think there's any Vortex generator answers for that fuel gap. So we started by using the recommended 90mm inner wing spacing. Believe me guys, they recommend this for a reason. You want the inner wing to stall first. But with the tufts, we could see that it did absolutely nothing for this section of the Kit Fox wing. We moved those Vortex generators up and down, up and down, nothing. Only once we decreased the spacing did we see some improvement. We ended up doing a very tight spacing, 50 millimeters behind the leading edge, which greatly improved the fuel tank section, but still not proportional to the ridiculous improvement we saw on the outer wing. We then developed a wing fence. We installed it between the fuel tank section and the outer wing. This will not give you a slower stall speed, but it will give you a softer, more controllable stall. And as you will see later, this is something I will definitely recommend. So now you've got a wing that can fly really, really slow. But what's the use if you can't control it? In some of our earlier tests, we saw that as the air detaches from the roof, we lose elevator authority. So to delay this process, we installed a row of vortex generators on the roof in line with the fuel tank section with a similar spacing. Then for the rudder, we installed the vortex generators in such a way that during level flight they have very little drag. As you slow down, the angle to the relative airflow changed between 15 and 20 percent for maximum performance. We then looked at the elevator. We did a few tests, but we found the recommended 50 millimeters behind the hinge to work great. For spacing, we treated it the same as the outside wing, placing a counter-rotating pair between the ribs. And of course we had to look at gap seal for the elevator. Is it really worth it? I used to be a naysayer, but think about this guys. With two stages of flaps, my new approach speed is 36 to 40 knots. I have to pull back so hard to maintain that, that after doing a few touch and goes, my arm gets tired. I know I should probably just hit the gym more, but I'll say it was about a 20% improvement in sensitivity. So guys, please, your first takeoff, make it a gentle one and be prepared to bounce that first landing. We bought this gap seal. It didn't work. We are busy working on a more permanent solution, but for now we used duct tape. Now, for that big question, which vortex generator is the best? They will all get their job done. But the Kit Fox being a top wing aircraft, you will always have fuel spills. And in the side slip squirting fuel, we prefer the aluminium ones for a more durable permanent installation. You can find all spacings and measurements in the description below. All what's left for me to do now is show you some proper storms. Chaburg Special Rules East India November Yankee will be getting airborne just west of Nigel. After departure, a routing to the East Rand GF, broadcasting next 124 decimal 4, India November Yankee. I'll be showing you two stalls today. The one I will immediately release back pressure to show you how quickly she recovers. The other I will maintain back pressure to show you how controllable she is during the stall. Of course, the other one is a lot more scarier, but let's do it. Before we commence with our stall, like always, safety first, so let's perform our lookout turn. This is not only just to look out for other aircrafts, but also to make yourself more visible. I just do them because they're fun. Okay, so I'm at 7,500 feet, trimmed all the way off. One stage of flaps, reducing power to idle. And let's try and maintain that altitude. 36, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 29, 29, and there she stalls, and she flies. This next stall is really not recommended. I'm going to try and keep her in the stall to show you how controllable it is. You'll hear the panic in my voice because it is really, really scary. Alright, so 7,500 feet. Jumped all the way off. One stage of flaps. Reducing power to idle. 36. Five, four, three, two, thirty, twenty-nine. There she stalls. I'm in a stall. Keeping her in the stall. I'm still flying her. I'm in the stall. 
Okay, still stalled, and I release back pressure, and she flies. That was fun. If you have any questions or would like us to research your make or model of aircraft, leave us a comment below. Or if you found this information helpful, show us some appreciation by clicking that subscribe button. Above all guys, be safe. Dream big, fly high, live the adventure.